Hey everybody, this is a video for my Essential 4DS students. Um, whoa, there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the questions on the expected gain and loss assignment. On the, the assignment that the front uh, one page is exercise 40, the other one says exercise 41. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'll, I'll go through enough of them to make sure that we, we understand what's going on and how to do these. Um, I'll start with a couple from exercise 40, which is the easier page. All right, so for each of the situations, I'll do a couple from number one here. For each of the situations here, uh, determine the mathematical expectation and assume that this is a free game to play. So in other words, you're not losing anything. So all of these should have a positive expectation. So let's say, for example, we, we do C. If you roll two dice and they both show a six, you win 90 bucks. So my expected value of this game is, well, it's the probability of winning times how much you you would gain. In this case, you'd gain 90 bucks because it doesn't cost you anything to play. So I have to figure out what's the probability of rolling two dice and getting sixes. And, well, remember, we've done some activities where we actually see that there's 36 different ways to roll two dice, and only one of those ways is both sixes. So if I have a one out of 36 chance of getting double sixes, I win 90 bucks. And doing the math for that, clear. Uh, one divided by whoops, ah, one divided by 36 times 90 is really my expectation of winning on every single time I play is only two dollars and fifty cents, not a whole lot. Okay, so so there's one of them. Yeah, maybe we'll look at E too. If I toss three coins. They all show the same, either heads or tails. You win $20. Well, if I toss three coins, there's two ways the first coin can land, two ways the second coin can land, two ways the third coin can land. So that is altogether eight different ways. One of those ways would be all heads. One of those ways would be all tails. So if I throw the two coins, I have a two out of eight chance of winning, which is one out of four chance of winning $20. So my expected gain is five dollars okay so starting at number two now you got to pay to play these games so see if there's an expected gain or loss um let's do number three you pay two dollars to draw a card from a well shuffled deck with no jokers excluding means don't put the jokers in it if it shows a club you win nine dollars oh okay you know what i kind of want to try this game i'm never too far from a deck of cards so here we go, here's my deck of cards. And they said uh, excluding excluding jokers. So these are my jokers here. So take take the jokers and right, those are those are the jokers. Take take them out. So it's a regular deck of cards. I shuffle. Shuffly, 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 shuffle. And okay, so what's the game again? Um I pay two dollars. So I pay my two dollars, and it's alright. Well shuffle deck. If it's a club, I win nine dollars. I just lost two dollars. Shuffle, 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 try again. Mm, lost again. Shuffle, 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 try again. Yay, I won! All right, so what's my expected value of this game? Interesting. Uh, yes, by the way, I am using a Minions pencil. All the cool kids write with Minions pencils right now, so there you go. Very nice. Uh, so let's see. Pay two dollars to draw a card from a well shuffle deck. If it shows a club, I win nine dollars. So how much of the deck? There's fifty-two cards in the deck. How much of the deck is clubs? Well, that's thirteen out of fifty-two, which is one out of every four cards. So I think I better do this on, on loose leaf. I have enough room here. So I'm doing number three, right? There's a couple pieces of paper. So number three. So for number three, I have an expected value of I have a one out of four chance of winning nine dollars, but it cost me two dollars to play, so I really only gained seven. And I have a well, okay, if one out of every four cards in the deck is a club, three out of every four cards of the deck is not a club. And if I lose, I lose the $2 that I was going to play. So what do you think? Is this going to be a positive or a negative? Is this game fair to me? Or am I going to lose money if I play it in the long run? Well, I don't know. What do you think? 
Well, let's see. That's 7 quarters. I'm going to just play with fractions and not use my calculator. Minus 6 quarters. And, oh, look at that. It's actually a fair game. It's a positive number. 1 quarter, which is 25 cents. So my expected value for this game is 25 cents every time I play it. Let's try another one from here. Uh, let's. I've already got a deck of cards out, so... Um, I pay one dollar to draw a card from a deck. If it's the Ace of Hearts, I win fifty bucks. Oh, fifty bucks. That sounds good. So let's let's give that a try. So fifty bucks. Okay, Ace of Hearts. Ace of Hearts. Come on. Need Ace. Okay, I gotta shuffle it first. So, Ace of Hearts. That was terrible. I'll try that again. Ugh, that was just as bad. This deck is stiff. Hasn't been played much. There we go. There we go. That's what I wanted. All right. Ace of hearts. Here we go. 50 bucks. King of clubs. That's as far from the ace of hearts as you can get. So, nope. Didn't win 50 bucks. Oh, well. well let's see. Pay $1. My expected value. How many ace of hearts are there in the deck? One out of the 52 cards. So I have a 1 in 52 chance of winning 49 for a game. Remember, it did cost me a dollar to play. And then minus, if 1 out of the 52 cards is the Ace of Hearts, 51 out of 52 cards is not the Ace of Hearts. And if that's what happens, I lose my dollar that I played. So, I think I'll use the calculator for this one. And I'll just enter my fractions as divides. 1 divided by 52 times 49 minus 51 divided by 52, I'm not going to write times 1, or I'm not going to punch times 1, equals, and look at that, this game is not fair to me. This game, I'm going to lose money over time. It's a negative, and, okay, it's money, so we round it to two decimal places, so decimal 0, 4. So I expect to lose 4 cents per game, right? If I played this game a 1,000 times, let's times it by 1,000. I'm going to lose 38 bucks. So there we go. All right. So there's there's the exercise four side. Um, now the questions get harder in the exercise 41 side. Sorry, that was exercise 40, not 40, not four. So exercise 40 was the other side. This this side, uh, the questions are a bit harder. Let's, let's uh, see what we got here. All right, uh, number one's not that hard. I'm gonna start with number two. Shelly pays $2 to roll a die. There we go. She wins the amount in dollars equal to the number that's shown on the die. What's her expected gain or loss? Okay, so this is interesting. So, okay, so I just paid you $2, I get to roll the dice. It's a four, hey, I gained two bucks. I pay another $2. I just gained four bucks. I like this game so far. So I pay you $2, gained another one. Pay you $2, gained another $1. Pay you $2. Oh, I'm on a roll. I've gained $3. Oh, there. That one I didn't gain anything, right? I paid you 2 bucks. I, I win 2 bucks. Broke even on that one. So really, I only lose when I roll a 1. So I'm, I think this is actually going to be a fairly fair game. So let's let's see. Let's see if the, the math agrees with me. Number 2. My expected value is, let's see, she wins the amount of dollars equal to the number that shows on the die. Well, that's interesting. Okay, well, six things can happen on the die. How many of them are wins? Well, she wins if she rolls a six, a five, a four, or a three. She loses if she rolls a one. What about two? Well, she doesn't win or lose, so I'm not even gonna calculate that. So she has a one in six chance of rolling the six, which gains her $4, because remember, it cost her $2 to play. Then, she has a one in six chance of rolling the five, which wins her $3. Then, she has a one in six chance of rolling the four, which wins her $2, and a one in six chance of rolling the three, which wins her $1, or gains. I shouldn't call these wins. These are gains, right? I minus how much it cost me to play. Don't worry about the two, because that's nothing. Minus, there's a one out of six chance that she loses her two dollars because she rolls uh, a one. Or actually, wait a minute. She wins the amount on the die, so she actually doesn't lose two dollars. She loses one dollar. 
right? Because she paid two and then gets one back. So she loses a dollar. So my expected value of this game is 4 6 plus 3 6 plus 2 6 plus 1 6 minus 1 6. Well, 1 6 minus 1 6 is nothing. So this is going to be a fairly good game for her. That's 7, 8, 9. And notice when I was playing it, I was kind of winning there, and you can see why. This is 9 out of 6, which is, uh, I'll do mental math on that. Please don't try. Uh, three, 3 goes into the top 3 times, into the bottom 2 times, so that's $1.50 expected every time you play. And that's a positive, so that's a gain. All right, most games of chance aren't going to be gains like that. Um, I'll let you try three. Three is kind of fun. Same with four. I'll let you guys try that. Let's let's go to this. Oh, let's go to the. Let's go to a real uh, game of chance in life. Insurance. So I'm gonna talk about insurance here for number five. Mr. Pulley Blank is purchasing an insurance policy that will pay twenty thousand dollars to his estate if he dies during the next year. Based on his age and health, the insurance company calculates that his probability of dying during the next year is, um, that would be about, you know, not even 2%, right? Move the decimal over, that'd be 1.62%. And yes, that's the actual kind of math that insurance companies have to do. They actually calculate when they sell you the insurance what they think the, the probability is that you're going to die and they have to pay you. So that's their calculation. What is the insurance company's expected payout? So what's the expected value for the insurance company? Okay, so payout, it means how much do they expect to have to pay out? Well, there is a, um, well, let's see, there is a 0 0.0162 chance that they have to pay out um, $20,000. in the coming year. One, two, three, twenty thousand. Right? Uh, and that's a loss for the company. So actually I should have done that number second, but I'll just put a negative in front of it. They would then they would actually expect to gain um uh let's see, what would they expect to gain here? Uh they well they expect to gain twenty thousand dollars. Um let's see, what was be the Point here. I'll give you the time here. So, if if there is this chance that they, here, let me move the calculator over. If there is a point zero one six two chance that the guy is going to die, that means that there's a one minus this number chance that he's not going to die in the next year. One six two, and that's point nine eight three eight. So there is a 0.9838 chance that they get to keep their twenty thousand dollars and and not have to pay anything. All right, so what's the expected rate here, or expected payout? We'd say. All right, so I'll do the positive one first. 0.9838 times twenty thousand. Minus 0 0.01, whoops, I said 1, 162 times 20,000. And as you can see, that's, that's a fairly big amount that, 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 they would, that they would get to keep here, right? So they would actually have to pay out, um, they, they expect to actually not have to pay that out. They, they expect that, actually, I'm starting to think now that maybe I shouldn't have even bothered with this. I'm actually, okay, I'm going to have a mulligan on this one. I'm realizing I'm not being asked for expected value. I'm actually just asking for what, you know, payout. Payout means not expected gain or loss. Just how much do you expect to have to pay? So the payout is 0 0.0162 times 20, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, so they expect to have to pay out $324. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, if they pay out, don't they pay out $20,000? Yeah, but they only pay that out this many, you know, 1.62% of the time. So on average, every time they sell it, they expect to have to pay that out. So that's how they set the price of insurance. So I'm, you know what? Let's just double check that I have the right answer. I actually have the answer key here handy. At least I thought I did. Ooh, maybe I don't. 
Oh, hang on. It's I linked to it in your blog. So I'll go to your blog. Wait a minute. Blog. There we go. Answer key. And come on, answer key. So exercise 41. Yeah. 5A, $324. So there we go. So $324 is right. So yeah, I was right. It's, this isn't an expected value question. It's just calculate how much they expect to have to pay out, and it's $324. So now for the B question, what premium will they charge, Mr. Pullybank, if the insurance company expenses are 20% of its expected payout and the company's profit is 6% of its payout? So, okay, so what, how much they, they need to charge him enough money to cover the fact that their expenses are 20% of this. So 20% of that. Oops. Oh, that's a terrible eraser. I have a better one. Stupid minions. 324. So 20% of that. And they want to profit 6%. So they want to profit 6% uh, of the payout. So there we go. That's what they want. They want to profit 6% and cover the fact that it costs them 20% to pay all their bills, you know, to pay their employees, keep the keep the electricity on, pay their taxes, all that kind of stuff. 0.2 times 324 plus 0 0.06 times 324 is, oops, ah, no, is 84.24. So they would have to charge him $84.24 per year to make money off of him if they sell him this insurance. C. It is important to the insurance industry that the calculated probabilities are as accurate as possible. What factors other than age and health should they consider in determining Mr. Pullybank's probability of surviving the year? Ooh. Well, they'd have to consider things like his lifestyle, you know, does he do dangerous things? Does he do skydiving as a hobby? I mean, I don't know. What, what's the guy do? Um, his general health. You know, does he does he exercise? Does he does he do things that are good for his heart versus things that are bad for his heart? You know, what's his diet like? Is he a smoker, a non-smoker? All of these things are basically part of his lifestyle, and they'd have to they'd have to know that. Actually, it is a crime. It is illegal to tell your insurance company when you're buying insurance uh, a lie like, oh, I'm not a smoker. Meanwhile, well, you smoke a pack a day. If you're trying to save yourself money and you lie to your insurance company, they, they have the right to, to uh, completely not pay you if, uh, for example, you die of a smoking-related illness and you didn't disclose that you were a smoker when you bought the insurance. Also, uh, you committed a crime. It's a fraud. You could go to jail. Of course, you'll already be dead, but whatever. They could put your corpse in jail, I guess. I don't, I don't know how that works. Anyway, um, so that's a good insurance question. Let's do one more. There's actually only one more on here. These are too much fun. Pandora paid $5 to roll two dice. She wins the sum of the numbers appearing on the dice unless a six appears, in which case she wins nothing. This looks like fun. Okay, I got two dice here. Let's play this game. So I pay you my $5. I'm Pandora. Here's your five bucks. Mmm. I only won three bucks, so actually I just lost two bucks. Okay, that one that one's a loss. Let's try again. Go Pandora. Alright, that's a good one. I paid five bucks and I just got nine, so I won four bucks. Hey, I won one buck, because it cost me five and that's a six. Oops, a six appeared. I just won nothing. Alright, so that's how that game went for me. It wasn't great, I don't think. Let's look at the math. Is this a fair game? Well, we're going to have to do the um, expected value. Um, justify your answer by analyzing the sample space. Excuse me, the sample space for the two dice rolls. All right, so she wins the sum of the numbers. Okay, this sounds familiar. I think we did an activity where we talked about this. I think we know that the probability of rolling a 2, which would be a 1, and a 1. Well, that's 1 out of 36. So the probability of rolling a 2 is 1 out of 36. And the probability of rolling a 3 is 2 out of 36. Why is it 2 out of 36? Because you can roll a 3 two different ways. You can roll a 1 and a 2, or you could roll a 2 
and a 1. And similarly, the chance that you roll 4 is 3 out of 36. The chance that you roll 5 is 4 out of 36. The chance that you roll 6 is 5 out of 36. The chance that you roll 7 is ah, 6 out of 36. And you, we should double check that, right? How many ways can you roll a 7? You could roll a 1 and a 6, or a 6 and a 1, a 2 and a 5, a 5 and a 2, a 4 and a 3, a 3 and a 4. Count that up. That's 6 ways. So does it keep going up? No, because that's the peak. Then it starts going down again. The chance that you will roll an 8 is the same as rolling a 6, 5 out of 36. The chance that you roll a 9 is 4 out of 36. The chance that you roll a 10 is 3 out of 36. The chance that you roll an 11 is 2 out of 36. Think there's two ways you could do it, right? You could roll a 5 and a, uh, a 6 or a 6 and a 5. And there's only one way to roll a 12. You'd have to roll double 6s. So there you go. If you add up all those numerators, you get 36. And that is your probabilities. This is a big question. Is this a fair game? You have to kind of do all of these separately. So let's think about this. She wins the sum of the numbers appearing on the dice unless a 6 appears. So how many of these rolls involved a 6? So ooh, let's think about this. Well. It cost her $5 to play the game. That's still going to be a loss here, here, and here. Now, if she rolls a 5, that's 0. So don't even worry about those, right? Because she rolls a 5, they pay her 5. didn't cost anything. It wasn't a win. It wasn't a loss. This would be all wins. This would only be partly wins, right? Because... There is one way here, there are two, two of these six ways here involve a six, right? The six and the one and the one and the six. So there is sixes involved here, 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 and here, and here. This is a loss, right? So let's, let's kind of add up how this works. Okay, so what are my wins again? My, my only for sure wins are here. Okay, so... My expected value. Mm, this is really going to be tough. This is a tougher question than I thought it was. So, is this a fair game? Justify your answer by analyzing the sample space for the two dice roll. Okay, so how many ways can this game be a win? What's the absolute most you could be a win? Well, notice that these are both losses because they both involve sixes, but this... There are, of, of the three ways to, to get a 10 here, one of them is definitely a win, and it's my biggest win. It's rolling a 5 and a 5. So that's a 1 out of 36 chance of winning $10, which means that because it cost me $5 to play, I gain 5 bucks. Plus, okay, that takes care of winning for this one. How about for my 9? Nine? 9 is a win if I roll a 5 and a 4, a 4 and a 5, uh, not if I win a 6 and a 3, and not if I win a, uh, not, not if I uh, roll a, a 3 and a 6. So I'm going to kind of start, these are all my ones I'm going to add, so these are my wins here. My losses I'm going to calculate down here. And back to this, uh, to, to this, the, uh, let, let's start at the end here. That for sure is, is just a plain loss. One out of every 36 times, I just lose my, my $5, and that takes care of that one. 11, both of those are losses, so why don't I just go, okay, add those two to this one. Make, make that kind of clear. So those are for sure both losses, because both, both ways to roll an 11 involve having a 6. There's no other way to do it. So that takes care of that one. Now back here, 10. One of these three goes here, but two of them, the 6 and the 4, the 4 and the 6, go here. So 2 out of 36 ways, and if I rolled a 10, again, I get, you know, nothing. I just lose my $5. So now that took care of the 10s. Now back on the 9s, again, for the 9, if I rolled 5 and 4 or 4 and 5, that's a win. So there's 2 out of 36 ways to win 
the nine bucks, which is a gain of four dollars. But the other two ways out of 36, sorry, I'm off the page. The other two ways of 36 are losses for a nine. And they're severe losses. You just lose your five bucks. All right, you get nothing. Okay, so that takes care of the nines. Let's move on to the eights. Hmm, well, there's five different ways to roll eights. How many of them involve sixes? The two and the six, the six and the two. So that's two of those ways that, again, two out of 36 are just straight up lose my five bucks. But the other three ways are wins. And if you roll an eight, that means you won three dollars. Okay, that takes care of eight. Seven is another tricky one. For seven, two of these six ways involve the six, right? The one and the six, the six and the one. So down on the losses, that's another two out of 36 ways to lose five bucks. But that's still four out of 36 ways to win. And if I have rolled a seven, I get a seven. It costs me five bucks to play, so that's a two dollar gain. Okay, that takes care of the sevens. The sixes, well, this, there's no way to roll a six and have a sum of six. So all of these are profits. Five out of 36 ways to win a dollar. Right? So that takes care of those. Now, these don't have any sixes in them, but they're all losses, right? So there is a three out of 36 chance. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting to move the page. There's a 3 out of 36 chance that I roll a 4, right? There's no 6s involved in rolling a 4, but if I roll a 4, I've lost a dollar because it cost me $5 to play. There is a 2 out of 36 chance of rolling a 3, and a 3 loses me um, $2. And there is a 1 out of 36 chance that I lose um, $3 because my dice adds to 2 and it costs me $5 to play. There it is. I have to add up all these wins and minus all these losses. Okay, let's see if we can do this somewhat systematically. This is 5 out of 36. You know that when you multiply a number by a fraction, you just times the top and top, bottom and bottom, and the bottom here is 1s. So this is 5 plus 8. 2 times 4 is 8. 5 plus 8 is 13. 13 plus 9 is 22. 22 plus 8 is 30. 30 plus 5 is, that's 35 out of 36 is my um, expected wins. So let's see if I, let me just double check that math. 5 plus 8 is 13. 13 plus 9 is 22. 22 plus 8 is 30. 35. Yep, 35, 36 is my, my expected wins. And my losses, okay, let's see what this is. This is, actually, I can shortcut this. Three, uh, notice that these all have the same five on them. So I could just go um, factor the five out, then add them up, and then multiply by five. So I can do the adding first. Three plus two is five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So it's 11 times five, which is 55 out of 36. So that takes care of all of these. And then these guys, plus plus. 3 out of 36 plus 2 times, oh, 2 times 2, that's 4 out of 36, plus 1 times 3 plus 3 out of 36. So there we go. So that's 55, 58, um, 62, 63, 64, 65. So that's 65 out of 36. So as you can see, let's put it together. Wins minus losses. 35, 36 minus 65, 36. I'll use my calculator and figure out how much, but as you can see, the one on the right is a bigger number, so this is a loss. This game is not fair, at least not for the person playing it. For the person running it, they're going to make all kinds of money. In fact, you expect to lose 83 cents per game. Is that what it says on the answer key? Because I don't know if I've interpreted this problem right. And let's see. Yep, expected loss is about 83 cents. Cool. So those are the kind of tough questions that you have to do in uh, 
that worksheet. And uh, I don't know, they're fun to think about. Certainly at last, that last question is way too big to ever put on a test. So if you understand it, great. If you don't, not a big deal. Thanks for watching, everybody. That stuff's fun.